Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless john 15 18 through 20 if the world hates you you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would love its own yet because you're not of the world but i chose you out of the world therefore the world hates you Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. A report released by a group in Europe says since last year, anti-Christian hate crimes have risen by 44 percent. The Observatory on Intolerance and Discrimination Against Christians in Europe says it has evidence of 748 anti-Christian hate crimes. They allege the incidents took place in 30 countries. The organization also says Christians who express a worldview consistent with their faith have faced legal discrimination. Joining us now from Austria is Anya Hoffman, Executive Director at the Observatory on Intolerance and Discrimination Against Christians in Europe. Hate crimes documented by your group increased in 2022. What types of incidents were most prevalent? Most prevalent are acts of vandalism still, so we don't have as many physical attacks as a vandalism of churches. Which is worrying, however, is that also the attacks which take the form of arson attacks rose quite significantly between 2021 and 2022. Anya, also, I understand that you're also documenting uh, discrimination of Christians for their religious beliefs. Can you tell us a little bit more about that and the forms of persecution? Yes, we talk about discrimination rather than persecution in terms of the legal discrimina discrimination of Christians. But we do see that there's an increasing pressure on Christians in Europe, especially for voicing their religious beliefs in public. We had cases of um, dismissals from school. There were some teachers who were dismissed for expressing their Christian beliefs. But we also had cases up to court trials where Christians were actually prosecuted or reported to the police for expressing their religious views or similar things. So especially from the UK, we have a number of cases. There were street preachers uh, that got reported to the police on the so-called public order bill, which also criminalizes causing distress. And we believe that this um, overly broad legislation is really a problem for Christians who express their faith in public. And Anya, I also understand um, the Christians who adhere to traditional teachings of the church are the ones who seem to be most targeted against. Um, could you talk to us about that? Yes, that seems to be what is behind some of this legislation. So we see really a worrying increase of Christians who just face their religious beliefs that are adherent with the traditional teaching of the church, getting into trouble for that. There was one case from Malta that particularly stood out to me. It's a young man who converted to Christianity and shared his testimony publicly on TV. He was then um, reported to the police, and now there's a court trial going on, which could um, lead up to five months to prison for him. And the background is that he used to be an LGBTI activist. He then converted, and under a new law in Malta, or not even very new, but a more recent law in Malta, he now got prosecuted um, for apparently um, propagating a conversion therapy, although he was not even mentioning that, just his mere conversion and his change of life seemed to be something that, because it's a controversial issue, is now regarded as something that under this anti-discrimination legislation needs to be criminalized. I hope you see where this is all going. Faithful Christians, those who still believe in the Bible are being harassed for simply holding to the doctrines of their faith. This is the future the Bible has been warning about. We have arrived, brothers and sisters. Persecution is here. Believers in Jesus Christ believe in the authority of the Bible. We believe homosexuality is a sin and marriage is between one man and one woman. We believe in the sanctity of life and that abortion is murder and is a sin. We believe God created us male and female 
and it is a sin to identify as a transgender. We believe Jesus is the only way to heaven, and that believing in any other way will send a person to hell. Get yourself spiritually prepared, because true Christians will be persecuted like no other time in history. This persecution will be based off of what the world perceives to be moral and right, and not what the Bible says. The sad thing is that many people who profess to be Christ followers will go the way of the world. These professing Christians are called lukewarm in the book of Revelation and are not saved. The world will persecute true Christians, and scripture tells us the lukewarm Christians will persecute them as well, as we read in Matthew 24, 9 and 10. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And then many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. Many who professed faith in Jesus as the Messiah in easier times will deny him and cooperate in exposing those who are true believers. The external hatred from the world puts all true believers in Christ under pressure. This in turn produces internal hatred among the professing Christian community during the tribulation. When the pressure comes, those who are not genuine believers will do three things. Fall away, deliver up one another, and hate one another. Matthew 24, 9 and 10 lay out a future time of great persecution for true believers in Jesus. Many in the church will avoid this persecution by betraying fellow disciples in Christ to the persecutors. Persecution is here. In the lead up to the Holocaust, the Nazi party ordered graffiti like this, which you see there of the Jewish symbol, the Star of David, to be plastered over Jewish shops and homes, meant to single Jewish people out to terrify them. These photos are from 1938. This is footage out of Paris, France today. Overnight, around 60 Stars of David were spray-painted on buildings in a southern district of Paris. Authorities in France do not know who is responsible or what their motives were, but given the history of the symbol, the act is being investigated as a potential hate crime. Since Hamas's attack on Israel on October 7th, some 850 anti-Semitic acts have been reported to the authorities in France. And as of this Sunday, France has made more than 400 arrests for anti-Semitic acts. The rise in anti-Semitism around the world since Hamas's attack on Israel earlier this month is undeniable. We've seen synagogues defaced, anti-Semitic graffiti. Just tonight, a Cornell University student was arrested, charged, after allegedly posting threats online that he would shoot up the university's kosher dining hall. Patrick Dye, a 21-year-old junior at Cornell, allegedly posted messages online threatening to stab and slit the throat of Jews on campus, among other threats. He's scheduled to appear in court tomorrow and faces up to five years in prison. The October 7th attack itself was the worst massacre of Jewish people since the Holocaust. But the terror inflicted from that attack is not just the barbarism of what happened that day, but the reawakening of the deep cultural trauma of the kinds of attacks that Jewish people have faced for centuries. This weekend, hundreds of people stormed an airport in Dagestan. This is in southern Russia. And they held signs that reportedly said things like, we are against Jewish refugees and there is no place for child killers in Dagestan. This was after reports of an inbound flight from Israel. They pushed past security. They went on to the tarmac. They were looking for what they believed to be was a plane filled with Jews from Israel, a plane that social media posts had signaled out and urged them to confront. Full mob scene. Thankfully, they did not find what they were looking for, but still at least 20 people were injured. Dozens more were arrested. This event in Dagestan has been called a lot of different things by the press, a protest, a riot, a mob. But there is a very specific word for exactly this kind of ethnically targeted violent mob behavior, particularly against Jews, particularly against Jews in Russia. Before the Holocaust, the worst massacre of Jewish people was actually a series of hundreds of massacres or pogroms carried out for the Russian Empire. And in Europe, it killed tens of thousands of Jews over a series of decades. The horrific nature of these events are a part of this history. We don't want to obscure that. Like what happened in Dagestan this weekend, pogroms were often mobs of civilians ginned up on some paranoid anti-Semitic media who sought out Jews specifically to punish them collectively. For decades, Jewish people had their homes destroyed, their property stolen, their families murdered just because they were Jewish. There is now a tragic and enraging surfeit of evidence from around the world that this is still the case, and its roots are deep as they are evil. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. 
he will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth, as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed and empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate both Christianity and Judaism. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Psalm 18.7 Then the earth shook and trembled. The foundations of the hills also quaked and were shaken, because he was angry. Iceland is bracing for a possible volcanic eruption, forcing thousands to evacuate, and it's also causing a bit of panic there, too. Since late October, tens of thousands of earthquakes have been reported in the southwestern part of the country, causing fissures and craters to form in the earth. You're looking at video of some of that, including seeping steam coming from the ground. Officials say the increased seismic activity indicates a significant likelihood of a volcanic eruption in the coming days. But that's not the only volcano capturing headlines this week with plumes of smoke also spotted in Japan and Russia. In fact, 19 volcanoes are erupting at the very same time. But it left us wondering, is all of this normal? There has been a dramatic increase in volcanic eruptions around the world and nobody knows why. You probably haven't noticed because nobody seems to be talking about it, but something is going on with the world. Volcanoes are erupting at a faster pace than ever, and earthquakes are going crazy, and nobody has an explanation for it. Nobody except God, that is. The seven-year tribulation is fast approaching this world, and the news headlines prove it. God in his grace and mercy is trying to shake the world out of its complacency. We are currently living in a time Jesus refers to as the birth pains. Jesus is likening last day's events to a woman in labor. The closer we get to Jesus' second coming, last day signs and calamities will become more frequent and more intense. Following the rapture of all true Christians to heaven, the Bible warns us that the wrath of God will be poured out on an unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation seems to include a massive volcanic eruption, as we read in Revelation 8.8. Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea and a third of the sea became blood. Smoke rising out of cracked roads in Iceland as scientists warn that a simmering volcano could erupt at any moment. More than 3,000 residents of a small fishing town have had to flee their homes. Brian Yenis live in Grindavik with the latest. Iceland is about the size of Kentucky with 400,000 people. And so when there is a volcanic eruption, which is usually once every five years, it doesn't affect many people or towns. But this time, Martha, it it is different because for the first time in a long time, in 50 years, Grindavik is now uh, could be at the epicenter of this thing and could be destroyed by a volcanic eruption. 
they expect this to happen on land. This won't be an eruption from a singular volcano. Rather, there's about a 10-mile-long fissure that's opened up where magma is building and could rise to the surface. When, where, and how much magma comes out is unknown, but that will determine just how severe this eruption will be. Already, thousands of earthquakes have damaged buildings and caused craters in Grindavik. So, Martha, at this point, it's a wait-and-see approach. We could get about a two-hour warning before a set eruption could happen. It's like sitting in a very boring movie, but you're stuck there. You can't get out of it. It's, it's unreal. It's hard to digest. Other residents also said the waiting for the eruption was the worst part. My house is okay, but it's on the red area, so it's, uh, it has collapsed. Uh, you know, the earth has collapsed about one meter or something. We don't know if we're going to have a home or what. Another massive earthquake has jolted the Philippines. A 6.7 magnitude earthquake has rocked the southern Philippines, killing at least one person. Authorities say the quake struck off Mindanao Island at a depth of 60 kilometres. Video shows the moment the shoppers at this mall scramble for cover. <laughs> A number of people were injured during the ordeal and several buildings sustained damage. It appears changes to our planet are now accelerating. The number of earthquakes around the globe continues to rise and volcanoes are beginning to behave in some unusual ways. We are far more vulnerable to natural disasters than most people realize and it looks like the shaking of our planet is only going to intensify in the months and years ahead. We were warned by the prophets of old and even Jesus himself that these things would take place right before his return. The whole of Fluke district in Jubaland state completely submerged. After weeks of heavy rain, the Juba River burst its banks, trapping over 400 villagers. Some of them had to wait hours for help in the trees. We climbed trees. The whole night until morning, we were beating jerrycans to call for help. We put babies and the elderly in beds and on trees and slopes. We have no place to go back to. We're now covered in plastic. Above us is rain and under us is water. There's water everywhere. We have no toilet. We can't move. Same scene of devastation, 70 kilometers away. Some children making the most of the situation, while adults worry about the future. The floods had a serious impact on business because there are no goods coming to town. We can't bring anything by plane. And there's a serious shortage of goods, fuel, food, and all other things in the city. Really, we will be feeling the impact. Around 1.6 million people in Somalia could be affected by the heavy seasonal downpours, which have been worsened by the combined impact of two climate phenomena, El Nino and the Indian Ocean Depot, according to the UN. They have described the flood as once in a century event. After two weeks of sustained rainfall, parts of northern France remain underwater. Towns and villages across the Pas de Calais department are only now seeing the extensive flooding begin to recede. Several thousand residents still have no access to clean drinking water and hundreds of homes are without electricity. It's a similar situation in parts of Belgium, particularly Flanders. Farmers are among the worst affected by the lingering floods. The saturated soil means flood water stays on the surface. Pumps that normally reduce excess rainwater in Copenhagen were overwhelmed and major roads were submerged. After one of the hottest summers on record, Europe is now coping with a historically wet autumn. As we look at the news, there is no doubt we are in the birth pains Jesus spoke of in Matthew 24, 8. We see many of God's remedial judgments manifesting, as if God is warning us of things to come and calling on people to repent. We see war and rumors of wars, famine and pestilence resulting in the deaths of thousands around the world. We are seeing earthquakes, extreme heat, floods, wildfires, tornadoes, hailstorms and hurricanes, all at record levels of frequency 
and intensity, just like Jesus said would happen just prior to his return. The judgments God will use to punish mankind with during the seven-year tribulation will be much worse than any of us can imagine. Still, this is God's grace and mercy, proving to everyone that these judgments come from him, and he is still offering forgiveness of sins through his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I implore you to do so today as we are not guaranteed tomorrow. All right, we are back with the Fox News Alert. Listen to this. Overnight, U.S. forces in the Middle East attacked for the 59th time last month. That's right. Uh, Kurdish officials say an armed drone targeted an airbase in northern Iraq. It is unclear if anybody was hurt at this point. Ainsley. And earlier, thank you, Stephen, earlier in Israel, mourners gathering at the funeral of an IDF hostage whose body was found during Israel's ground offensive in Gaza. Trey Yings is live in southern Israel with the latest. Hey, Trey. Yeah, hey guys, good morning. The Israeli forces continue to operate around the Shifa Hospital in the heart of Gaza City. They say they've uncovered a tunnel on the complex, and this yet still does not provide all of the details of what they say are currently underneath the Al Shifa Hospital. The Israelis say this is a headquarters for Hamas. They've shown these new images of the tunnel system, they say is underneath the hospital and weapons also in the radiology department but we've yet to see any evidence about this headquarters they speak of also we know that the israelis have recovered the bodies of two hostages near to the shifa hospital this was a devastating update for the israeli people who continue to hold out hope for those nearly 240 hostages being held inside gaza the first body they announced yehuda weiss a woman in her 60s from the small kibbutz of Beri. she has five children she was being treated for breast cancer and she was dragged into Gaza on October 7th. There was hope that she was alive, but again, Israeli forces have recovered her body near Shifa Hospital. The second, as you note, a 19-year-old soldier that was taken into Gaza on the day of the massacre, Noah Marciano, and she was in a hostage video released by Hamas. Ultimately, they released also a photo of her body saying that she was killed in an Israeli airstrike. This comes as the Israeli forces are pushing deeper into Gaza City. They say they took over an Islamic Jihad stronghold, gathering some rockets you can see in this video here. It's not clear if the larger rockets are props that they use in military parades or the real thing. But the Israelis say they blew up the compound and they continue, as you can hear behind me, to strike targets in the northern part of the Gaza Strip amid reports they may be preparing to enter southern Gaza. Matthew 24, 6 and 7. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Nation is the Greek word ethnos, which means a race as of the same habit, i.e. a tribe, especially a foreign, non-Jewish one, Gentiles, usually by implication, pagan. What I believe Jesus is saying here is that there have always been wars and rumors of wars. But when you see the same ethnic group fighting the same ethnic group, now pay attention. His return is near. Russian fighters from the Wagner mercenary group receiving a hero's welcome after liberating Mali's northern city of Kidal from Tuareg rebels. This is a major victory, both for Wagner and the Malian army. They have succeeded where the French forces have failed and without the help of the UN peacekeeping force. The Tuareg rebels known as the Azawad forces held the town for over a decade, but are now on the retreat. Kidal was once the stronghold of Tuareg rebels wanting to create their own homeland. They call the Azawad, a territory almost double the size of France. After weeks of fighting, thousands of residents of Kidal, mostly Tuareg and Arabs, are fleeing to neighboring Mauritania. Most are women and children. They carry with them tales of horror, rape, torture, husbands or brothers or fathers hacked to death. Rights group believe Mali's army and Russian fighters have committed war crimes. These people are, are merciless. You know, they are uh, conducting, you know, um, what they call scorched earth policy. They kill everything in front of them, and the civilian is the most affected ones, unfortunately. In Mali's capital, Bamako, thousands gathered to celebrate the capture of Kidal, but also to denounce the UN peacekeeping force. Since their arrival, the situation has only gotten worse. Hundreds of villages have been torched under their watch. They have been bystanders to communal violence. They need to get out. 
The UN is withdrawing its peacekeepers in haste. Almost half of their barracks are being taken over by armed groups and not handed over to the Malian army. After a series of military losses and defeat, the capture of Kidal is seen as a significant step in recapturing lost territories from armed groups in northern Mali. The capture of Kidal is a return of Malian sovereignty. It's a consecration of the Malian army efforts. They have been recruiting fighters. And most importantly, this victory shows that being an ally with Russia works. This spells the end of the 2015 Algiers peace accord signed by Malian forces and Tuareg rebels. With the UN peacekeepers leaving, Malian and Russian fighters are stepping in, attempting to impose peace by force to a country spiraling into civil war. A firefight outside Loigor University in eastern Myanmar. Fighters from the Kareni Nationalities Defense Force advancing on the 6th Infantry Battalion. Surrender and we won't hurt you, shouts the KNDF commander. Slowly and very cautiously the soldiers inside emerge, despondent, dejected and defeated. This is just the latest in a string of defeats for Myanmar's military in the past month, giving hope to the government in exile that the tide is turning. The offensive started in Shan State when several armed groups came together under the name the Brotherhood Alliance to launch an offensive against government troops. That in turn triggered other attacks across the country. Since the 27th of October, different ethnic armed groups have made substantial gains in Shan State, Kachin, Sagang, Chin, Rakhine, Mon, Kaya, and Kayin states. The area under complete military control has shrunk considerably. Even in areas where it maintains dominance, the strain is showing. Fuel shortages are forcing drivers to queue for hours to fill their tanks in the largest city, Yangon, as supplies are diverted to the troops. As the fighting increases, so do the number of those seeking safety. These people had fled from Laogai and Shan State. Many concerned that after its recent losses, Myanmar's military will fight back with a ferocity that pays no attention to civilian lives. Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. 
Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.